always say, people always ask, well, why has no one ever done sweet corn before? And I say, because we're the only ones dumb enough to do sweet corn. So um, it is. A Maybe you're the only ones smart enough to do that. No, it's stupid. <laughs> it's, I was, uh, I was trying know. to throw some credit. No, 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 no. It's complete stupidity. It's, no, uh, I don't they think They would, so. they would burn the place down. <laughs> Welcome to a new episode of The Whiskey Stop, and you actually just went somewhere this week to check out a distillery. I did. Old 55. Where's that? Newtown, Indiana. It was a great road trip, and I found some fascinating things when uh, when I went on in there and had a great conversation, too. What a great family. It is. Jason there and his siblings, they're running the entire show, and they're really making up some interesting things there. They are. Check this out. 100% sweet corn bourbon. Absolutely fantastic. And they have a bottled in bond that you'll find on the shelves as well. You're going to want to check that out. Some great bourbons. They know what they're doing. Let's go see. Newtown, Indiana. This is Old 55 Distillery. We are going to check it out. Old 55 Distillery is distilling some truly unique whiskeys and world-class bourbons. A true family operation, even Maddie is making guests feel welcomed. This is Jason Fruits, and he shares with us the farm to bottle experience at Old 55. How do we come up with the name Old 55? I know it's pretty, this is a pretty simple answer yeah, to this. No, so, so the road that runs right in front of the distillery here mm -hmm. is Old State Road 55. I think it's a great name yep. for bourbon. Oh, yeah. There's something about that. Oh yeah, there's Old a, 55. Well, it's a great Eagle song, right? Which was not on purpose. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you know, Old 55 cuts Newtown uh, right in half, and it's mm -hmm. just kind of this old, it's kind of like everything we do. It's it, it's it's been chopped up, and there's highways now, but there's little segments of what used to exist, and that's kind of perfect for the brand. It kind of encapsulates it. So here, I grew up. My you parents live a hundred yards down the road. You know, Dad has us all back in Newtown now, and I've decided that he's he's got to be an evil genius because I don't know how he weaseled us all back I, to. I know Dad's gr glad yeah, to have you back. Yeah. Oh, Dad's glad, yeah. and we're glad to be back. It's it's uh it's kind of funny how things fully happen in a circle yeah. and turn around. My dad hates it when I say this, uh, but I, um, we are one of the largest family owned grain operations left in the country. Is that uh, right? Um, and the reason for that is, is because there are no family owned grain operations left in the country. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's the reason. My dad gets all the credit for it. Uh, my dad doesn't drink. He's never had a sip of beer or liquor in his life. He's not interested in any of your products here? Nope, nope. So I asked him. Has I, he tried them before? No, no. So I asked him if he wanted <laughs> to try them and he goes, I wouldn't know if it was the best thing or the worst thing I've ever had. So to your question originally of how this all kind of started, uh, Ashley's, my little sister's twin brother, Aaron, my little brother, who's my right hand man and dad's right hand man he uh um he gets all the credit for starting this so i was working at a casino in anderson and uh young we were all freshly married had just gotten married and all of us got married in 2010 and we had looked at a bunch of stuff biodiesel because diesel fuel was so hot high in 2008 mm -hmm. 2009 um and uh you know, an ethanol plant to make fuel, uh, dog food, we make full fat uh, for a dog food producer in Southern Indiana, but dog food's not very sexy, right? I mean, mm -hmm. nobody wants to make I'm dog in the dog food food. business. Nobody yeah. wants to make dog food. I so, understand. Um, so he gets credit because he was like, well, let's make whiskey. We got all this corn. Yeah. Family has all this corn. Uh, let's make some whiskey. And that kind of got me on the, once again, idiot savant. Um, uh, I just kind of started, took the deep dive and tried to I'm kind of a sponge for information and I'm a huge dork. So um, I basically just learned everything we possibly could. We started dragging dad around all over the country to all these craft distillers and we went to all of them, asked all the hard questions and uh, and then kind of uh, dad said, hey, bring a business plan to me. That's what I do. So I brought a business plan to him and I really thought it was a pipe dream. I didn't want it from the beginning to be a hobby. Does that make sense? To you wanted it to be a piddly. business. I wanted it, yeah, I wanted a career, I wanted a legacy is what I wanted. Mm -hmm. and, you know, I was just like, there's no way 
that uh, this is going to be possible. And Dad said, "Sure, let's go." So to start pretty much from zero. Okay. Absolutely, I mean, absolutely. From to be able so. to do what you've done, it's, it's, I think that's quite a testament to what you're doing. Well, it is. It's a testament to. Um, it's a testament to my family for working their butts off to make this happen. All of this is all because of my father. Like he, you know, uh, we can have a cool story. We can have a cool bottle. You know, we can have. Uh, we can do things different than everybody else does, and have this great story. And everybody has a great story, right? That's what sells. Mm -hmm. uh, I told him from the very beginning: if the brown stuff in the bottle isn't the best stuff on the planet, we're we're in trouble. Mm -hmm. And he said, uh, for a guy that doesn't drink, he said, I agree. Uh, mm -hmm. One of my favorite stories is when we tr when we uh, visited all these craft distillers all over the country, um, multiple ones of them. We would get to the end, and they would, uh, uh, you know, whoever was giving us the tour, the owner or whatever, would be like, "Hey." Did we offend your dad? And I'd be like, no, what, what, what's wrong? And he's like, well, he hasn't tried anything. And they're like, is, is he all right? And I'd be like, oh, he doesn't drink. And they'd be like, what? <laughs> like, he doesn't drink. And I'd be like, yeah, no, he doesn't drink at all. He's never, he's never drank. And they're like, okay, you know. So I always, I always tell people this. I just have the world's best um, investor, and in that it's just, you know, dad and the brothers and I own this, and we have. You know we're vertically integrated we we own, we do it from field to bottle all this comes from my grandpa's farm so this year we just got our 100 year centennial certificate oh, for the family farm from, nice. from the state of indiana yeah. so we've that farm has been in our in the fruits name for 100 years fruits myers that vertical integration so that you know we tell them what we want planted they plan it for us so i ride in the combine and, and actually it's the myers family um gene and his sons are are amazing we we have um have some really cool people involved in this that have really bought in from the beginning and like like for instance like with our sweet corn you guys will get to try this we make the only sweet corn bourbon on the planet so it is a hundred percent corn mash bill the difference being that it is a hundred percent corn on the cob sweet corn as opposed to regular field right. corn and i always say people always ask well why has no one ever done sweet corn before and i say because we're the only ones dumb enough to do sweet corn so um it is a maybe bear. you're the only one smart enough to do that no it's stupid <laughs> it's, i was, uh, I was trying know. to throw some credit no no no, no it's complete stupidity it's no, uh, I don't they think would so. they would burn the place down if we don't. and the, well and the, the real answer to that is is the reason that we can make sweet corn bourbon and no one else can is because we're vertically integrated we can eat that cost because we own the farm ground right. uh, my family knows commodity moving corn and storing corn is what we do we went around to these craft distillers and I, the product that i liked the most all seemed to be kind of from this one company that made this one still from Germany that was uh, uh, Coda Stills is who they are mm -hmm. and uh, I laugh I, I think we're past the smothering stage but I, I you know everything that we have out here is like the Ferrari of equipment it is the nicest most expensive distilling equipment you can buy on the planet and I the first couple of years and still occasionally I wake up waiting for dad to just be standing over me with a pillow and saying it's, <laughs> it's time for you to go to sleep, you know, so, uh, and I probably deserve that for the amount of money that I've spent. You know, I just have the Starship Enterprise. We have the coolest still, you know, I mean, yeah. it's a, it's an awesome piece of technology and it lets us do some really cool things. And uh, because of that, I think it shows, it lets us show you know what we craft through our products and it's pretty incredible but we have a we have a product over here wabash cannonball that we just started selling in august and i have two original bottles left of it because we were so, we sold it out in two so, days so, so bourbon is is always the focus and now this year uh we've just released uh whiskeys for the first time that are aged in our bourbon barrels so uh two products there uh bottled and bond out this year within a month or so mm -hmm. products already we're just waiting on labeling and uh yeah we're just excited it's it's fun that that'll be huge the, the bottle and bond is kind of one i've been waiting six years to release yeah. that's the that's the fun stuff that's going to be neat isn't it yeah oh yeah, yeah. it'll be fun. I always look for a bottle and bond on the shelf too. you should yeah. you know people that understand what that labeling means is that's why there aren't any bottle and bond bourbons because you actually have to make them to do yeah. it you know and not only that there's lots of people that make their own bourbon but still can't meet the requirements to be a yeah. bottle and bond bourbon which is huge uh, long-term plans how do you see it all go from top to bottom as legacy this is my family we've we've had interest from uh almost all the big um bourbon companies in purchasing us and they've contacted yeah, you. and we we and they've visited and toured and and the the idea is this is this is you know i always say i want my great grandkids in 200 years to be selling old 55s you know, i want to put uh 
credit where credit is due and that is on the generations previous and it is it is this is affording those same opportunities to my kids that yeah. my parents afforded to me and us being able to it's just the next generation of family business of us having synergies with the grain elevator and, mm -hmm. and the farming and our agricultural mm -hmm. roots We'd like to keep this all in the family though. absolutely so we actually yeah. don't have and no one works here except for family it's mm -hmm. all just uh, the siblings and dad and i so i see your passion oh yeah well Not, and we want to go see some other stuff yeah let's go too. see some other stuff so we're at five fermentations so this right. is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Oh, okay. Uh, if um, we are efficient enough that we could go to 21 fermenters, and that is a lot. That we is. have no intention of being that big. We don't. Right. I know. We know our niche. We know what we want. Well, accomplish. if you want to keep it in the family too, you've got to have a certain number of family bigger, members to be bigger, able to do bigger, that. Bigger, biggering, and biggering, and biggering is the yeah. American way. Uh, it's yeah. not always the best way. Okay. So right. I like efficiency, uh, and that's something that we've done here. Uh, so mill everything here. Mill ferment. Uh, distilled barrel there at the end, and then we'll go downstairs and check everything out. So, um, all grain from the farm here. This is 2019 sweet corn. This is um, the worst year we've had for sweet corn ever. So, these two rows heading back uh -huh. are all the sweet corn we have for 14 acres. 14 acres of regular field dent corn, like you guys drove past right. all the way down here from South Bend, would fill this to the ceiling. We were letting this fill dry, and then we were drying it. Uh, um, we kind of have a proprietary process that is, I always say, the redneckery that goes into making the sweet corn is mm -hmm. beyond, that's why it's <laughs> sweet. So. I think you invented a word. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, Mark, so it's like Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory just makes delicious adult candy is what I say. <laughs> so this is, a, this is a hybrid reflux still, 19 bubble plate, three tower, hybrid reflux still. It's just an incredible piece of equipment. It's all made in Eisenhower, Germany for us uh, by Coda. And, uh, they, and like you said earlier, you looked around, but this is this is what I want. This is what you want. Um, you can't make bourbon in Newtown, Indiana, and it'd just be good. It kind of needs to be the best. The best. And uh, to that point, uh, we chase that, and my dad let me chase that, and we, I think, make some of the best bourbon on the planet. And the the idea is that. Um, we needed flexibility because I we could try to make the best ever and you still could have something that was very good but not necessarily you wanted yeah it's good and better than everything well but you, even logistically yeah. logistics wise you just don't know like I have great corn I have all these things but we have some uh, we have a different way of doing things here and without just basically following the Kentucky you know recipe card which we right. don't at all um the, what are we what are we going to get and what we got I I'm pretty impressed by it so Heads, hearts, and tails. Everybody gets rid of the head. Hearts and tails are left. We get, uh, you know, we don't put any tails. And then of that heart cut that's left, we take about this much. So I'm going to show you the most grossly over-exaggerated example ever, and it just happens to be out here right now. So this is off of a ton, 2,000 pounds of sweet corn. All this right. is all she wrote. So a normal distiller on, the, on this system would uh, just about fill this bad boy up. Okay. Our bourbon is about half of that because really? we keep. Uh, this is, once again, like I said, the most ridiculous example I can give you. So this is the sweet corn. This has about six inches in the bottom and that is of 2,000 pounds of grain. That's all we get. That's and it's about a 13 hour distillation. It's the wow. most painful thing in the world. So so this is 160 proof. We also distill right at the legal limit for bourbon. Uh, and so this is a long fall, but here I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna reach in here and then stick your guys' fingers out and you can try this. Taste how smooth that is for 160 proof. Like I wouldn't have guessed it. Jet fuel. Oh yeah, yeah absolutely. I wouldn't have guessed it. So that is the building block. Uh, that is the foundation of everything that we do. Yeah. Tell uh, me about your yeast strength. So, so we use uh, what's known as a sweet mash as opposed to a sour mash. So we mash with water straight from the well. I mean, it just comes out non-treated. The only time it gets treated or reversed osmosis, which every distillery ROs their water, right. they're lying if they did tell you they don't. And the reason for that is, is even my water in the well will change seasonally. Does that mm -hmm. make sense? Taste yeah, will. Sure. So I want a baseline because I don't want my well water affecting the taste of my. So I want a baseline, simplified, you know, just uh, it's not changing the bourbon. I'm just mm -hmm. cutting the proof to where I need to cut it to. As far as the yeast goes, so we do a sweet, like I said, sweet mash. Uh, we'll get that up over 90 degrees Celsius and then we'll introduce, like I said, um, six proprietary enzymes and four proprietary yeast. Mm -hmm. Fermentation yeah. is a week for us. So is it? seven days. Okay, so, so we'll, that's that's more than a lot of them. Yeah, I mean, so we'll do, yeah. I mean, we can, we, we'll hit I'll hit fermentation in basically in about four days. I'm done in four days, but I don't want to chase 
vessels. So it does that make sense? So it's like yeah. Monday, and then next Monday it's coming out. Does that make sense? You guys will notice we use a 30 gallon barrel that's proprietary okay. because of the basement. So all the barrels, the hundreds and hundreds of barrels are underneath our feet right now. Uh, we're the only North American distillery that ages everything underground. So oh, we're gonna go down there next. Uh, Old 55 converted an old high school for their distillery. The barrel aging happens under the same gymnasium where Jason's grandfathers played basketball. To, uh, this racking came from a Kroger that went out of business in Lafayette. Um, it is actually inefficient. I can't get enough barrels on it for the space that it takes up. So once we clean out this little lump of barrels right here, that'll be uh, our, our part of the bottle and bomb that's coming up. All this racking is going to go up to the production floor to put finished product on, just okay. and go like basically two stories tall. And then everything is going to go to these um, uh, at least three high through here and then five high underneath the bleachers. So, actually, if you look underneath here, you can see the bleachers that go up. It's pretty cool. So the plan is always age the bourbon down here, um, and then if I fill this up with, like I said, about, I would think about 4,000 barrels is what we could fit down here of bourbon, mm -hmm. uh, we'll just build a rack house outside, and those whiskeys that we released this year, uh, those whiskeys would just go to a traditional rick house. Like it's all, based on when you went through the door and the tasting room back, all of this is bonded premise, so the locks are approved, you're on camera everywhere. Isn't that? Motion sensors, everything. So kind of cool. Uh, but I, the I, thing is it has to be milled, fermented, distilled, barreled, and aged by the same master distiller on the same bonded premise in the same season. The same season. And what yeah. that means is you can't fake it. You yeah. know what I mean? You got to do everything. So even a lot of these places, like, you know, it's, it's not uncommon for uh, a lot of the big distillers in the places where you go to tour, like where they have the still, you know what I mean? There's no rickhouse there. There's mm -hmm. no bonded, well, they go miles away to go to the rickhouse. Well, you, those spirits can never be bonded because there's nothing wrong with taking your spirits and putting them in another bonded warehouse, but you just broke, if you ever wanted to bond those spirits, you broke the rules. They, they didn't stay on the same premise. That's and we head back to the tasting room where Maddie awaits. Interesting. This is our bourbon mash bill. It's just never been in a barrel, so it can't be called a bourbon. So we've won a bunch of gold medals for this. You can, but you can tell what this is going to grow up to be to oh, an yeah. extent. Oh, absolutely. Because if this isn't good. Oh, yeah. So if what's going in the barrel isn't we, drinkable. I cannot, I cannot, like, tell you how much of this we sell. It's absolutely ridiculous. Like, when we tried the... Uh, the distillate and the, if any distiller will ever let you try their raw distillate immediately try it because that will tell you exactly what it's going to yeah. turn into because that is the base it can only be as good as that is so this is the same exact thing and this bottle is probably eh, i'm gonna say somewhere about three and a half years old is what this is right oh, here okay. okay so this is our single barrel bourbon same mash bill 80 percent corn 20 percent soft rubber and wheat no so this product has been to wow. date our best seller um but it is um it is actually like i just said it is actually being phased out so this exact product is going up to 100 proof and going to be minimum of four years in our bottled and bond so this is what we're world famous for so this is the world's only sweet corn bourbon so this is the third bottle right here okay 100 percent corn mash bill the difference being instead of regular filled dent corn this is 100% corn on the cob that we were that you guys got some uh, footage of out there. Nobody okay. else is doing this. Nobody else in the world. So the reason, so people always ask me why nobody else does this, and I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to let you drink why I tell you why nobody okay. else does it. So I call this dessert bourbon or corn brandy. I promise you've never had anything like this. And the reason that nobody else does this is um, bubble gum, kind of like uh, cotton candy on the end. It's got, it's very, very interesting. If I didn't make it, I would think that was a brandy. I would never think that that was a bourbon. That could pass as a brand. That's pr what's the proof? That's eighty. Proof. And that's an eighty. But the flavor is right there. Oh yeah. Oh, it's awesome. You brought it's it down cool. to an eighty, but you're not. It's still. It's, that, it's but still I can pretty. Still... Yeah, it's still pretty complicated for an eighty. So the reason nobody does this is um, is uh, about threefold in nature. So number one is the cost. So a bushel of regular field corn, like you guys drove past the whole way here, is fifty six pounds. That's the the measurement that we use in that in the agricultural industry. So fifty six pounds of corn is a bushel. Okay, and a bushel of corn at the elevator right now on the Chicago Board of Trade. They're beating everything up today because of this coronavirus. So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna say three dollars and sixty cents is probably high. Okay, so three dollars and sixty cents is what you can buy fifty six pounds of corn for. Okay, is what if a farmer wanted to sell his fall? Uh, um, dad might be at three. He might be ten over at like three seventy four. Okay, fifty pounds of the sweet corn that we use to make this is a thousand forty dollars a bag. Wow. For a 50 pound bag. 
So we take $2,080 and plant 14 acres of it, which $2,080 isn't that much money, but we have 14 acres of it, but you saw how little we get and how long it takes to distill. Yeah. And that's the next thing. The real cost in this is the, is the opportunity cost. So um, I distilled 19 barrels of that last year and it took me over seven weeks. In seven weeks, I can make 250 barrels. You know. So bottom line on producing that for you, the good well, idea? It is a perfect example of what my family can do that nobody else can do. That's actually do. really nice. Oh yeah, yeah, no, no. yeah. So my favorite thing I make is right here. So this is, I'm just grabbing one of these. We have two barrels, we have two uh, uh, barrels for sale in here right now, but this is uh, uh, this is the lower. There's a 57.3 and a 56.1. You're welcome to try both. This is a uh, 56.2. So where I say the sweet corn is what's made us world famous, I say this is what um, my great grandkids in 200 years are going to be selling. So this is our single barrel bourbon, the same bourbon that you already had. Okay. The same thing that's going to bottle the bomb. The only difference with this one is, is this is our this is cast strength. So we pump this out of the barrel, and we physically have to write the proof on Which, because we have absolutely no idea what it is until we until you until take, it, we out take it out of the barrel. And what, and put it on what the this meter. Mean? So this is 56.1. This is 112.2. Okay. okay. So I say this about barrel strength. Barrel strength, so I've already told you that I'm a proof head. I want proof always, okay? Right. So barrel strength, I say, is like a double-edged sword. With the, with the proof comes all the flavor that we want as bourbon drinkers, but usually comes the Kentucky hug and the kick in the ass, right? Mm -hmm. And this is like having your cake and eating it, too. This is going to be smooth on your tongue and just no heat down your throat and just going to warm your belly up. It is... Um, to be that proof and to be that smooth. Oh, it's, it's, I've got That's when you know you did it right. Exactly. I have 114.6 over here, and they are just smooth as can be. And caramel, like caramel yeah. vanilla bombs. It's awesome. So the sweet corn is completely unique in that, like, there's just nothing like it. So how do you compete with it? How do you put it up? This is bourbon. Does that make sense? And this is a weeded bourbon. So think of, like, Weller, Pappy. Um, we did really well at San Francisco uh, last year, uh, two years ago in 2018, because it's all word of mouth. Like my, yeah. uh, going back to what I originally told you sitting over there uh, and my dad getting all the credit, if this brown stuff didn't speak for itself, nothing else mattered. And he made sure that I could do that. And that's, this is, this brown stuff right here, I would put against anything on the planet. I, can I just mention while we're looking at this, I love the shape of the bottle. You kind of round it on the bottom. Oh, yeah. yep. I like the guy that looks different on the shelf. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Because I know that's eye candy. It's not flavor. That's not going to affect what's in the bottle. But I just like something. So I have kind of. all the front of the labels are uh, calligraphy from a good buddy of mine, Rajiv Surendra. So he hand draws the front label. Obviously, it's digitally reproduced, guys. But, right. Uh, the label, the front label. But originally, he hand, he hand drew, drew every bit of that for He's us. He's pretty good. He's really good. <laughs> He's really, really good. Uh, we sign all the bottles on the back. So they have uh, the batch barrel number, the bottle number, and then signed by one of the family members. So that's that's absolutely incredible a labor of love that's, to be uh, sure so you're a man with passion jason yeah, yeah well we gotta we got dad should be proud yeah. the family should be happy oh they it, everybody should be proud and i know you put in a ton of work which you couldn't do if you mm -hmm. didn't have just a oh yeah a well, big passion for that a lot of that has to do absolutely. with family well and well and the, the family across the board there's so many people working their butts off to make this happen i just get to be the goofball in front of the camera. So. Yeah, well, I think you do a heck of a job. Well, And you know, we learn a lot, and it's the story behind bourbon. People go and grab a, a bottle off the shelf. Yeah, that looks good, let's try that. I think it's sometimes you like to know the history behind it. Yeah, yeah. And I think what's fun is um, it looks good, and you grab it to try it, and then you're gonna be blown away that it's from Indiana. And then on top of that, when you learn the story, like it just keeps getting better and yeah. better and better. Can't brag on the family enough. All the siblings that are working their tails off to make this happen, and my my dad obviously for being the whole reason that this is here. What's your dad's name? Jeff. Well, salute to Jeff. Amen. Yeah. And Jason salute. to you too. I'll drink to that. Heck yeah. All right. Well, that bottle and bond sounds pretty exciting. That's, that's going to be. Out. I, I can't wait to try with that one. Jason out. was excited about mm -hmm. that, so that'll be very cool there. So we need to have a taste of something though. So what do we got here today? No, I'm excited about this too. This is and check it out. Old 55's single barrel bourbon. Mm. Yeah. So this isn't blended or anything. It's uh, Old 55 and. Uh, check this out. Well, we're barrel strength. Yeah, it's barrel strength. This is how it comes out of the barrel. They don't bring it down to 100 proof or anything like that. Straight out of the barrel, 57.3. Uh, 
uh, percent alcohol by volume. So 57.3 and you times that by two to get the proof. To get the proof. Mm -hmm. So let's see, 57.3 divided, no, it's not divided by, it's times, oh, I had to clear that. 16, to, no, where did I get 16? What was it, 57, uh, it's 500 proof, that's not right. It's 114.6. I was going to say that. Yeah. Something's wrong with the calculator. Yeah, we'll get a new one. That one didn't yeah. have a 7 on it. Yeah, it um, didn't have a 7. All right, let's pull out those glasses. Okay, then. tasting glasses. Sounds all good. All right, I hope these are big enough. A little too, smaller. I, too much? I do have to get home today. So. Oh, okay. Well, we'd get you there eventually. This is a little more. That'll work. That's all our right. speed. That's about a little bit. I think that's a little safer, too, don't you? Mm. So here we go. This this is this is gonna be marvelous stuff. We'll know we had a tasting with this. I tell you, for the amount of that proof there too, that's incredibly smooth there. And that is, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even guess that was barrel strength. Yeah, I mean it's the it's, the flavor is rich and full. Well, folks need to go out and and uh, get that as well if they can there, or you know pretty soon the bottled and bond there. So, thank you again for joining us on a, another episode of the Whiskey Stop. Um, make sure to go ahead and subscribe to this series with everything going on right now with the coronavirus. Not sure how frequent we'll be able to release new videos. So to stay alert with those, you want to be subscribed to the channel there and check us out also on Twitter and the whiskey at the whiskey stop and also on Instagram at the whiskey stop too. So this is absolutely delicious. It is. And to those watching, cheers. Thank you.